Andy Eller for Vin News at the Brooklyn Cruise Terminal, where 3,000 women from six continents are gathered for a gala banquet, the highlight of the Kinnas HaShluchos, celebrating the amazing and inspiring women who dedicate their lives to spreading Yiddishkeit throughout the world each and every day. Sarah Lachanowitz. And you are the Shlucha too. St. Martin. What is it like to be living in what most people would consider paradise for real? It's, um, and living on an island is not, you know, as everybody thinks it is. When you're vacationing, it's obviously paradise, but living on an island has its challenges. Being on an island with limited resources and um, limited knowledge, uh, you know, the local people with limited knowledge, raising a Lubavitcher family and having children and parks and playgrounds and kids growing up, it's not like... It's not as paradise as it is when you're just coming in and out. How long have you been living there? We're there seven and a half years now. And are you planning on staying for a while longer? We'll be there till Mashiach comes, Amrit Hashem, sooner than later. That is amazing. What are the things you missed most from being back east? Not pizza and ice cream. Um, I think just the, the normal way of living, the, you know, Kids having friends, kids having parks to go to. There's no parks on the island for kids. Um, medical, the medical situation being normal and regular rather than, you know, third world style. Just a, a normal way of life as opposed to a vacation way of life. I think that's something we miss from time to time. But it's always good to come back and get all of our updates on doctor visits and dental care and the shopping and kids running around in the grass and all those things. Do you not have grass in St. Martin? There's, very, there's no parks for the kids. For some reason, I guess the beach is a good enough playground. Um, but there's, no, there's not a lot of space when it comes to kids running around freely and having a good time. And you and your three sisters are going to be doing the roll call tonight. What did it feel like to be asked to do that? It's exciting. It's it's. it's it's very exciting to be up there and um, doing something that each of us represent, being all over the world and each corner of the globe and doing, fulfilling our shlichas. How often do you get to see your sister? Baruch Hashem, only during Simchas, so Baruch Hashem for Simchas, and um, that's really it. We're, we all came together for this special and we're excited, but not every year are we all able to make it. Um, so it could be, you know, we, we hope for the next brother or sister to get married. Amen. We should all share simchas. Loma Hecht from Orange, Connecticut. And you are a shlucha in Orange, Connecticut? Yes. And you are here tonight. You have your four daughters are going to be up there at the end doing the roll call, which is such an emotional moment here. How does that feel for you? Overwhelming, really. I'm just really proud of them, and seeing them up there together is going to be really something. How many children do you have on Shluchos? Just the four, four girls? I have um, presently five children on Shluchos, and another, what, another son is going in the summer, Mertz Hashem, out on Shluchos with his wife. So where are all your children located that are out there in the world? The oldest is in Milford, Connecticut, with her husband and children. How far is that from you? That's close, thank God. <laughs> That's about 15, 20 minutes away. Then we have a son and his family there in downtown New Haven. That's also close. That's also about 20 minutes away. Then our daughter is in um, Scotland, Edinburgh, in Edinburgh. How often do you get to Edinburgh? If I'm lucky, once a year, but sometimes not even that much. And where are the rest of them? Then the next daughter is in St. Martin. So. You know, one is nice to go in the winter, one is nice to go in the summer. Then I have um, a daughter in Hanoi, Vietnam. What is it like to go visit Hanoi? Do you look and say, oh my gosh, let me get my baby out of here? I actually haven't been there yet. My husband has, and he came back and he said, I don't know how they live there. It's just amazing. It's like the, my granddaughter was showing him, Sadie, you can't walk over here because here the people are doing funny things. But we're going to go walk over there, and you have to put on boots when you walk, Sadie, because we don't want to step into all the things that are lying around. So, yes. 
these are the words that warms a mother's heart, knowing that your daughter is out there. But I tell you, when I see the things that my children are doing, it's just um, a beautiful thing. And wait, there are two more daughters or one more daughter? Um, there's another daughter. The youngest daughter is not married. She's in seminary in Eretz Israel. And um, my five sons. So the oldest son lives downtown New Haven. The second son is moving out to Lincoln, California, Mr. Shem in the summer. And then I have three unmarried sons. So you are going to be sitting here tonight, Shepping Nachas, big time, watching your girls up there. Merit Hashem and probably crying. Mushki Lane from Hanoi, Vietnam. And you are also going to be up there tonight with your sisters for the roll call. Yes, God willing. What does that feel like? Exciting. Um, it's a big honor. We're very excited and um, we feel privileged to represent this huge family of sisters. What is it like, you grew up in Connecticut, to be living in Vietnam in terms of kosher, educating your children, buying clothing for your children? It's definitely different, but each day is, is an adventure. Each day is an exciting challenge, and um, my husband and I feel lucky to have this privilege. So tell me how it is that you help Jewish people in Hanoi. So we help them with kosher food, um, Jewish holidays, um, any, any Jewish need that should come up, we're there and we're ready to take the call. And how long have you been in Hanoi? Um, almost three years. Just about three years. And are you looking to come back to the United States anytime soon? No. We're there f until Moshiach comes. Beautiful. Thank you so much. My name is Khani Wilhelm and we live in Milford, Connecticut. And you are here with your sisters tonight, your mother, and you're going to be up there for roll call. What is that like? It's going to be really exciting. Looking forward. How many people do you have in Milford, Connecticut that you're currently working with? We have about 500 families, and we're working actively to raise Jewish awareness and spread the light of Yiddishkeit. Did you ever have a feeling of, I want to go overseas or wherever? Are you happy to be in Connecticut? Or did you ever look and say, no, I want to go someplace really far out? You know, it's funny because... I'm the oldest and my sisters live in some crazy places and people always ask me, how did you end up in Milford? And you know, there's some, there's some great things about being close to home. We have a school for our children and it's really nice when everybody comes in to home base. We're not too far away and this is where we are. We're happy there. We're building a beautiful community and we're very proud. And there's probably, in a place like Milford, you look like, say, your sister in in, in Edinburgh, you know, I don't know how many Jews you have there, but in Milford, you probably have so many unaffiliated Jews that you look and say, let's let's get them and bring them back in. Definitely. Tell me your name and where you're from. Mosca Benchimola, I'm from Argentina. Oh my gosh, how, have you been to a Kinnis before? No. What is it like to come here and meet all these girls? And it's nice. Are you guys going up there and singing tonight? Yeah. What are you singing? A song. That's a good thing to be thinking. Okay, no problem. Um, how long did it take you to get here from Argentina? I think nine hours. And you are homeschooled in Argentina? No. Where do you go to school? And like in the center. And it's like 40 minutes from my house. And how do you get there every day? With car. Do you, there's, is there kosher pizza in Argentina? Yeah. What else do you have in terms of kosher food? Ice cream, hamburger. What did you like most about coming to New York? Canta Guinness. Okay, you guys all excited to go in there and sing and whatever? Let's, let's Here we go. So nice meeting you, thank you. Yeah, we love her. Where are you from? I'm from Commerce, Michigan. Cool. What's your name? Mussy Greenberg. And how many kinesis have you been to? Um, too many to count. Um, I've started when I was around nine, and I've been here ever since, every year. And I'm 17 now, so that's six years. And do you want to go out on Shlichus one day? In Mirzashem, I would like to, yes. Any place in particular? Nope. Anywhere where I end up. That's beautiful. How many girls do you have here tonight that you guys are working with? I have no idea. Kenai Nahara. Kenai Nahara. <laughs> Thanks so much. So Thank nice you. Here. My name is Tammy Chaimpur, 
And you are a shlucha to Great Neck Long Island here in so, New York. So really right here. Yes. Not very yeah, exotic. Very but <laughs> Rifki Islandberg. I'm her daughter. That's so nice. And are you going to be going on Shlichos also? Yes. I will be going, yeah. Any idea to wear? Um, maybe Great Neck. We're not sure. We're looking around to see. But um, over the time, we're going to try out my parents. We're going to see where right we're going. Now, she's helping us out. She's teaching in our school. So that's the first step. And her husband helps us out also. And we're going to see if it works out. Then they'll come back with us. Beautiful. What is the Great Neck community like? So uh, predominantly, the community I work with is Persian. It's Jews who came out from Iran uh, up to like 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Um, and some new ones keep coming also, but we work mostly with the Persian community. But it's very diverse. Great Neck has all levels of Yiddishkeit. It has Jews from like you know, very Ashkenazi, young Israel, um, you're very Sephardi. But my particular shlichus is very involved with the Persian community. Where are you from originally? I'm from London from England. Uh, my husband's from Iran, so he talks Farsi fluently, and that's really one of the reasons why we chose to work with the Persian community, and the Rebbe gave us our, his bracha to go out on Shlichus and work with them uh, when we first got married, like about a year later. So we're working with the community since 1989, but we weren't always in Great Neck. Uh, we started out in La Dispoli, Italy, where the refugees were there. So the Persian refugees, they couldn't come straight to America. They had to stop off for a couple of years to wait and get their visas in a neutral country. So they were in Italy. So we worked there alongside with Hayas, an American joint. It was a very interesting shlichos. Uh, we were there for the Yiddishkeit aspect of everything and bringing kosher food and uh, teaching the kids and making a camp and things like that. And then we, after a couple of years, La Dispoli closed down because there was no more Hayas over there to arrange for the visas. So we returned to the United States where we started to work with the community first in Kew Gardens. And then as the community moved on to Great Neck, we came to Great Neck also. So that's why we're there now and we're very happy with them. So you don't have the challenges of kosher food or where am I getting my shaitel done, any of those things. What are some of the biggest challenges you face in Great Neck? Mm. Well, because that's a tough question. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't see my shlichus as a challenge in any way whatsoever. Only as a tremendous schus. And you're right. I don't. I, in a, Great Neck is inundated with kosher food and kosher restaurants. In fact, people come from all over New York to come to the finest restaurants there. Um, so personally, one of my challenges was that um, I really wanted my kids to be in a Hasidic school. I wanted them in a Lubavitch setting, in a Hasidic Lubavitch setting. So. Uh, and so I had to drive my kids every day back and forth from Great Neck to Brooklyn and with the traffic was very difficult. So throughout the years that was one of my main challenges because it meant four hours a day on the road. Eventually Baruch Hashem today we have a whole bus full of kids going from Great Neck to uh, Crown Heights. So I'm very lucky, Baruch Hashem. You have an entire community of Hasidic families in Great Neck? Um, families who are very affiliated with Lubavitch. There are other Lubavitch shluchim in the area. Actually, it's, it was the other shluchim who arranged it. Um, you know, they were like, you know, enough of us driving back and forth. Let's just make a bus for everyone. So some shluchim who are close to us attend. And yes, there's a good number of families who've joined us over the years have become close to Lubavitch and wanted their kids to go to a Lubavitch school. So yes, I do have Baruch Hashem. It is a full bus, Baruch Hashem. What is your name? Sheina Luba, from Paris, France. Well, were you born in Paris? Yeah, I'm, I was born in Paris. And where are you the shlucha in Paris? We are shluchim for the University of La Riboisier in Paris, France. Do you feel concerns about anti-Semitism in Paris? No, we don't feel concerned. We have a mission there, so we're not afraid. We know we are here for a purpose, so we are very happy to be there. And how many families do you have? No, we don't have families. We have only students. We have like uh, 600 students. Uh, it's a medical university. We make a uh, kosher lunch for them every day. Shabbat turns, a lot of stuff. It's very nice. I'm Broya Johnson from Australia, Melbourne, Australia and I am one out of seven siblings. Wow, what, how, do you go to school, are there yeshivas in us where you are in Melbourne? Do you do the online shlucha school? In Melbourne there's like a full on Jewish community. There's um, shul, 
school and everything, my father has the kolel. And yeah. Is this the first time you're here at the Kinnis? Yeah. Tell me your thoughts on being here in New York. I think it's pretty cool how there's like so much of us. Like I thought it would be like um, a medium or small size camp and this is just year six and there's so much people. What kind of things have you been doing over the last few days? We've been cheering a lot. We, we've also, we've, we went to the OIL today and we went to 770 on Shabbos and we've been doing a lot of like, like, like going crazy. Tell me how old you are. I'm 12. What was it like for you to go to the Rebbe's OL to 770? These are places you probably hear about a lot in Melbourne, but it's a world away almost. Well, I was pretty like, in 770, I was like, just like, sort of shocked, not shocked, but like, like oh my gosh. And then in the OL, it was all like a lot more serious and everything. Did you put a kvittel by the Rebbe's, by the, in the OL? Yeah. And is this like summer camp? This is like camp only better? Yeah, it's like we stay up late, we sleep on the floor, we, we party. And I bet you've made a lot of new friends. Yeah. Are you going to be Skyping them when you get back, texting them? I'll probably be emailing them. Emailing them sounds great. You want to come back next year? Yeah. Okay, we'll work on your mom, all right? It's <laughs> about your rudiment. I'm actually not a shlucha. My, I came with my daughter, who is a shlucha in, in Nighting, Massachusetts. And they're doing fantastic work. They did. They turned... Uh, a desert, I'm talking from a Jewish point of view, a desert into an oasis. It's like a, it's like a, a, a malchus over there. As a mother, what is that like for you to see that your daughter... Oh, it's wonderful. It's beyond words. It's wonderful. About four, five years ago, I started attending the uh, kinos, and I, I shouldn't say the word addicted, but it, it, I can't miss it. It's so beautiful. It's so inspiring it's 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 just you see how I'm excited I'm getting it's it, it just it's um, uh, magnificent uh, you know whatever word I use it's like uh, they um, it, it's really what they the, the shluchas deserve to have this kind of a um, uh, uh, this kind of event to recharge their batteries to give them courage to go on because they're having a very difficult job it's, it's a 24-hour job, to seven days a week. Tell me how many children and grandchildren you have who are shluchos and shluchim. Uh, well, actually, I have one daughter, and she's a, she and her son are shluchim, Fogelman, in Natick, Massachusetts. And uh, their children were helping out, but they, they actually, yes, wait a second. Her son is now a shaliach in uh, near Columbia, um, Maryland. And uh, the other girl, the girls uh, who are not married, one girl is married, but she's uh, California, not the Sushlucha. So basically, the Nachas is like way up here for you. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Can I know her? May it just continue? Okay, so we are here at the babysitting center at the Kinnis Hashluchos. You can go, there's not a lot of differences between the men's and the women's Kinnis. There's beautiful meals, there's inspiring speakers, there's Tehillim. I'm going to venture a guess that there is no babysitting at the men's kinnis, and here tonight there are about 140 babysitters, 280 little girl, little babies being babysat. Tell me your name, please. Shayna. And where are you from, Shayna? Um, Crown Heights. Have you ever come here to babysit before at the kinnis? How old are you? Ten. Okay, and who is this adorable little girl you're babysitting? Um, Revi. Okay, my name is Mushki Raskin, and um, we're in Shlichus in London. Um, we're here for the kinnis. What I find totally amazing about this babysitting is that they have one babysitter for one or two children and literally every single child is looked after personally on a one-on-one -on -one basis and every babysitter has the exact details and information they need um, to how to contact the shlucha and it's a very, very baby-friendly kinnis in general. So the sessions continue smoothly without any interruption. The babies get looked after. Mothers and babies are in contact. Shluchas are in contact. It's all beautiful. And I feel really confident leaving my baby here knowing that he's well looked after at any age. How old is your baby? Um, this baby is six months. And have you ever come here and done this before? This is my first kinnis and I'm totally confident. I feel really good about it. And you are totally, how, you've never met the person who's taken care of your baby before? Um, I actually have, um, and I know from before, but I would trust any of these babysitters because I see the way it's, it's, uh, the system is put in place so well, and it's so systemized and so organized. My name is Devorah Frank, I'm from Flatbush. 
And you are here tonight with these two cutie babies. Oh my gosh, they are so yummy. How yeah. old are these boys? Um, he's four months and she is like three months. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you a boy when you were a girl, sweetie pie. I'm so sorry. Yeah. What happens if there's like, do you have like contact the mother if you need yeah, to? Yeah, so I have her number and I have like also her table in case. I want to go to her table if she doesn't answer her phone. Like, right now, their service is not working. So I have to actually go to her table or she has to come here. Like, every few minutes, she keeps coming to see how he is. But they're doing amazing. They're really good babies. They're just chilling. So that's amazing. And you literally have one baby in each hand, the right hand, the left hand. Yes. And but she's chilling the entire time. I didn't have to pick her up once. He, I had to pick up a little bit. But it's amazing just to be here. Like, the experience and everyone. It's amazing. I love it. Have you ever done this before to Yes, yeah, I did this a lot. But usually with my nieces and nephews, but this year my sister couldn't come. So I did these two babies. Have you ever met these two little cuties before? No. No. Total strangers, and you're just here to be with them and... Have fun. My friends are here. There's food. I got to see what's going on right there. Right. I got to be here. Otherwise, I couldn't be here. Wow. And I heard that there are like 140 babysitters here tonight. Yeah. So that's like 280 babies that are here. Hi, and um, Where are you from? From Florida. Actually, yeah. Really? Where in Florida are you from? Um, Cooper City. I'm on Sukha, so I decided to help out other Sukhas by babysitting for them. That is so nice. And how many how many families do you have in Cooper City? Um, there's actually a lot of Jewish families. They just opened up. Um, we just came and made a new shul. So it's in Pembroke Pines, and then we switch off by Shabbos, so it's amazing, yeah. Beautiful. And tell me your thoughts about being here tonight babysitting. It's great. I mean, this baby literally didn't wake up, and he's an angel, so it's amazing, yeah. How old is this little guy? He's two months. No way. Hi, cutie. So this is like his first kiss. Yeah. First kiss ever. And how about you? Um, probably like fifth. <laughs> OK. Is this a paying gig for you or a pure mitzvah? Or both? Actually, both. And like at the same time, I was like, I want to help out other shachas. And I also want to get paid. So why not? It's good. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. You are great. Hi, I'm Jackie. I'm originally from Fairfield, California, now residing in Brooklyn, New York. And you are here tonight as a guest of a shlucha. What brought you here tonight? The opportunity to be surrounded by other Jewish women. Growing up, I was, I felt like the minority in my hometown. And it took my shluchim to come to Fairfield and Vacaville and just pull us all together and remind me of what it's, you know, the importance of being Jewish. Not just show up on high holidays to synagogue, but to, to, to make it your everyday life, to appreciate Hashem, to recognize yourself and to share with others and to be proud. And, you know, just let everyone know, you know, I'm a Jew and I'm proud and it's just, it's wonderful and it's opened my eyes to so many things. I've learned so much more and it, it makes me want to cry just being surrounded by so many other Jewish women because, like, I'm not alone anymore and I, I don't have to ever think that again. So we're behind the scenes at the Kinnis. I'm talking to Hadassah Gazinski of the Five Towns who was on the committee for the Kinnis. Tell me the role that the woman plays in a Chabad house. Hi, welcome to the Kinnis Hashluchos with women from around the world, Chabad Rebetzins, Chabad Shluchos from around the world, every corner of the world. In short, the role of a woman in a Chabad house is equal to the man. How's that? Very different. Yeah, let me tell you. Behind every, everyone, you know, people say behind every man is an amazing woman. Behind every woman is an amazing man. We are a team. We work as a team. We work with love. We work with an openness to reach out to Jews in our communities. All backgrounds, all affiliations, and we do it as a team. It's a team effort, teamwork. Behind every man is a great woman, and behind every great woman is an amazing man. While the Kinnis is designed to energize shluchos so that they can continue their avodas hakodesh, no matter where in the world they may be, I leave here tonight truly inspired by the many women I've had the privilege of meeting. At the Brooklyn Cruise Terminal for Vin News, I'm Sandy Eller.